Hello everyone and welcome back to From the Depths Cam Ashes of the Empire campaign with me, Zicargo. We uh, were managing some stuff when this little rhino over here, uh, not my rhino, an Onyx Watch rhino, attempted to sneak around the side. So, gonna pause it, make sure that everything can do that, make sure the slider is maxed. Okay, Todd Howard's gonna have to disable their movement so that they can land initially, and then we'll turn them on. Alright, now let's take a look at this Rhino. It is 325, almost 1,000 materials, so it weighs over a million. Holy crap. Oh no. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, that is a lot. As far as the look of it, uh, it's got... Is this a laser system? Does it have laser munition defense? Okay. Okay. I am picking up what he's putting down. It's got flares as well. Doesn't really matter because we're using laser designators. Let me go ahead and unpause. Todd Howards have figured their shit out. Or did they all flip over? Hang on. Did every single one of them have this problem? Okay, no, no. This one's fine. Aw, oh, man. This thing is getting railed by our missiles. It might have laser munition defense, but the, the Toxotides fire a whole volley of missiles, and there's four of them, so we overwhelm it still. Which is very nice. The rocket wagons, they're again, they're firing half HE, half frag, so... Pretty high damage output, even though they're only those 150 casemates. Oh yeah. I'm very happy with how these Toxotides are performing. It looks like we blew out... Yeah, we blew out one of the cram cannons. We're wearing through the side armor. Ooh. Oh my, it's already too damaged. It still looked pretty much okay to me. <laughs> I'm surprised. That thing could take a lot of damage without looking like it's uh, mostly destroyed. Yeah, very nice. Hey guys, Editor Zicargo here, as opposed to in-game Zicargo here. I just want to let people know that I decided to try something uh, for this episode, a way of recording. Uh, I slowed down every fight, and then I sped up the footage in post. To be entirely honest, I'm not directly happy with the result. I think a lot of that had to do with my implementation. I already acquired all of the footage for it, and I didn't have the old save. Otherwise, I would have gone back and redone uh, most of it. So if the footage seems a little bit uh, jagged or a little bit raw or, or strange on the quality front. Uh, that's just a little bit of a side note of what, of what happened. The Todd Howards, uh, after this fight, I'm going to hop into the editor. I'm uh, going to change it up a little bit so there's some rubber on their butt. Uh, and I add in some control blocks to make sure that their, uh, their propulsion is delayed a little bit so that they can land and get stable before they move on. Alright guys, a little while later and the Onyx Watch has sent us another Longhorn to deal with. Now we have edited the uh, the Todd Howards as you previously saw. Just to explain, there's two ACBs. When they initially load in, one ACB sets their thrust all the way down to 0%. And then a couple seconds later, another ACB sets their thrust full. On top of that, we've repositioned the, thr the thrusters from a couple of large to a whole bunch of uh, small jets. Uh, and then put a bottom layer of rubber. Uh, it's slightly slower, and technically speaking, the jets all have less health, so it's easier for it to get disabled by enemy fire. However, it no longer slams its butt on the ground and then instantly disables itself, which is... Alright, now the Longhorn, of course, the biggest danger that it has is going to be its very large missiles. Thankfully, they're uh, they're pretty bad at actually hitting small and fast things, so we don't generally get hit by the missiles, at least we haven't so far. 
our rocket wagons are really laying down the fire. Uh, a quick, a quick, quick pause where I had to go check, check some AI stuff, and we've got everything working. And this is the new Todd Howard, the new and improved. Oh, look at that! Oh, look at that! Yes, you see that? You see the blasts coming out of the back of it? And. I love these guns. I love these the revolving blast guns. I like that you can actually uh, make a shotgun. The problem I always had with ramming vehicles, there's just there's so many different things that can go wrong with a ramming vehicle that I never just trusted them to, to operate correctly. But the land campaign, you're almost always going up against a tank. And uh, tanks generally aren't very tall, at least so far they haven't been. Okay, oh, well that's a new one. I've never seen... Never seen Todd Howard just lift up like that. Not entirely sure what caused that. I'm sure he'll be fine. Uh, the original Todd Howard. Closing in, the first one to hit. Closing in for another set of blasts. Oh my god. And it's dead. It is dead. Good job, Todd Howard. It just works, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it just works. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. All right, guys, here we are with another fight. The Onyx Watch sent another wave at us, but we've loaded in our viewer submitted craft. We have a fleet here that's just the assault tank, two limes, and a whole bunch of super makos. So, yeah. Up. Uh, Thanks to these guys for submitting these crafts. Uh, they're all awesome. Uh, if you want to submit viewer craft for the next faction after the Onyx Watch, uh, link to my Discord is in the description. Now, I've been having a problem with this link because it's supposed to last forever, but it doesn't seem to. So if you click the link to that Discord and it doesn't work, just let me know. I will I will update the link as soon as I see your post. I will respond to you directly on YouTube, uh, and I will make sure that anyone who's trying to join it uh, uh, can can get it. I don't understand why those links expire because they're they're set to never expire. That being said, uh, it's actually I'm actually not sure who has the material advantage here. So the Longhorn is about a hundred thousand, and the Fletcher is about fifty, and or no, the Fletcher is about eighty, and I think the Oroch is about fifty something. So two hundred and thirty thousand on their side. Which looks like the volume limit's not quite right. Turn that up just a little bit. We've got the Limes. These are uh, hover tanks that fly quite far away, and they have pretty big missile volleys. We've got three of our Phalanxes right here. Uh, these are big, beefy, 55k each. We've got three of the updated Todd Howards, the one that actually works. Uh, not the one that blows its own blows its own butt, but... Yeah, and then we've got the Vanity Armaments Assault Tank over here, coming in at about 80k. Let's get this fight underway. Uh, I'm not sure if the Super Mako was uh, was saved incorrectly on uh, on my end or on your end, uh, but I'm going to have to go back in uh, and edit that design to make sure the connection rules are applied when it is saved. But wow. Oh, something has EMP. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, I meant to make sure that nothing had EMP. Oh, I goofed. Goof. Wow, this thing is really... <laughs> it's really taking a lot of fire. You can barely see the tank under how much damage it's taken. Alright, so I did mean to make sure that uh, anything submitted to me didn't have EMP. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys what you can and can't use or what's what's fair or anything like that. Uh, I think if, you know, EMP damage has been in the game for a couple years now, so if things aren't properly defended, uh, it's, it's fair game. Personally, I don't like when a vehicle shuts off like this and just stops fighting back. Uh, I would much rather... Uh, to me, EMP should work like internal damage, where just occasionally something goes offline because you're firing EMP at it. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of... Some vehicles are well protected against it, and others get one-shot by it. Uh, this seems to be the latter over here, so I will be going back uh, and editing those vehicles just to take away their EMP damage. Uh, again, you guys use whatever you want to. I'm not going to enforce my honor rules on anyone else. Uh, you know, that's just something that I choose to do. That being said, the Onyx Watch are pretty weak to Hesh. 
And we've got a lot of that as well. All oh, those large missiles coming in from the line to finish it off. Very nice. Very nice. The Todd Howards looks like they're all going for the other vehicles. Now, I do want to see these Todd Howard connections. Because I'm just obsessed with these revolving blast guns. So we're going to leave that Longhorn for a little bit. Longhorn's pretty tanky. It might take us a while to kill that. Let's go over here and check out the Fletcher. Looks like we're going to have a direct connection. Oh, Todd. Oh, Todd. Show me what you got, Todd. Yes, Todd. Yes, Todd. Slay it, Todd. Todd is officially now a queen. I love these shotguns. I could watch this all day. I could literally watch this all day. I could just I could just spawn in these things for a 1v1 and watch it like 20 times in a row. I love these revolving blast guns. Todd has one shot at the Fletcher. Very nice, Todd. Alright. Let's go. Game's still slowed down. Let's make our way back over to the Longhorn. I might have to start turning the UI off for these fights. In fact, I probably should have been doing that a long time ago. Um, <laughs> once again, I had to. I recorded all of this uh, in slow motion and then sped up the footage in post. That's what I tried for this video. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're kind of at the, the time I'm doing the vo the, the voiceover. Uh, it's kind of long gone. The opportunity to go back and change that. Which is a bit unfortunate. Like I said, uh, I will be changing that for next video. And oh my, those large missiles from the Longhorn coming in over top. Oh no! Another one! Oh, and another one! F's in chat for the vanity of Armament's assault tank. No! Todd! Todd! I can't believe you've done this, Todd! Friendly fire, dude! I mean... Alright, Todd. Alright. Alright, I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you this time, Todd. Look at how much damage he did. Oh no! No, stop it! Stop it! Todd! <laughs> oh, Jesus, Todd. Check your fire, man. Alright. Good fight, good fight. All right, here we are coming up uh, on the other side of the map, making our move against the last bastion of the Dustwind Gypsies. Over here, we have a manure factory. You know, of all the things, I, I was not expecting a manure factory. I was expecting, like, a get tree or a fortress. See, look, over here, Seabird Cannon Fortress, a water tower. That makes more sense than a manure factory. Another cannon, some houses, a land marauder? I really hope that this is a full Marauder that they just, like, slapped some tank treads to. Like, I, I hope paddles are still spinning in the back. And it's actually just a Marauder on on some tank treads. That, that, would, that would be amazing. Coastal defense with a Sidewinder glitching through it. I hope that doesn't cause any problems. So we brought on our side, uh, I don't know, like seven or eight rhinos and accompanying air power uh, I'm not entirely sure uh, I don't <laughs> for being real I'm not entirely certain that it's gonna matter now the first thing on the chopping block is gonna be this sidewinder we did have to spawn quite far away so the sidewinder being the only thing that's approaching us is probably not gonna make it too far uh, we got a lot of random things spawned in so we are in degraded mode which is a bit unfortunate Oh, I've, <laughs> the Sidewinder has just... It, it's its tapped out. I'm not entirely sure what happened to it there. Um, the, uh, the Whatever was delayed, so it just, it just kind of despawned. We're going to have everything focused to land marauder so that hopefully we can get out of degraded mode, but look at this thing. Uh, I'm a little decided... Uh, decided? I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't actually have its big old paddle at the back. That being said, it is a beautiful design. I love the, the ramming wedge that they've added to it. They've added a, a dorsal cram cannon. And uh, they have, in fact, just kind of strapped tank treads to it and put little cannons uh, on those tank treads. They've also given it a crane. Uh, and it has now run into one of its own structures. 
which is obviously not ideal. It's a little bit of a sitting duck. Hey guys, once we watch this uh, Land Marauder in its final moments, if you've made it this far into the video, please consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribing to the channel. Uh, it really helps, and that's all I'm going to say about it. I hope you've enjoyed watching, now let's get right back to it. Man, this thing is very cool. I, I wish I could make stuff that actually looked as cool as uh, what a lot of other people managed to build. The Dustman Gypsies and the Deepwater Guard, uh, they're the easy faction in the game, but... My god, the aesthetic skill that goes into making those designs is something else. I think I'm at about 1700 hours in FTD and I still can't come close to making stuff look as pretty as this. I've got a couple designs that look good, but let's be real, it's mostly the camo uh, and an accident. It's camo and accident. That's what makes it look good. It's not actually... Uh, It's not my aesthetic builder skill. What a scene. F's in chat. For the Dustwood Gypsies. Pretty sure that's the last thing they have. I guess they still, they still have a couple cannons, but you know. Uh, <laughs> I think from here we're on cleanup. Gonna pause it so that it can despawn uh, without lagging the game, and hopefully we can. Uh, Move on with the rest of this fight, not in degraded mode. Sped it up a little bit. What are we going to target next? Looks like the radar guided missiles heading towards the manure factory. Manure factory, of course, also looks absolutely magnificent. They've got this crane. Nope. Oh, we've blown up a house. And we've blown up the arbalest. Very nice. Assuming the manure factory is probably going to go up next. I'm sure this isn't a war crime, right? This crane. Oh my god, this crane is a bomb! Okay, never mind. Actual weapons factory labeled manure factory. Because we all know that manure isn't explosive. And fertilizer isn't explosive. No, uh, it, it could be. It reasonably could be. Are we destroying civilian infrastructure, or are we destroying a weapons factory? Um, the better question is, if we blow it up hard enough, will people know the difference? There we go. Actually, you know what this is reminding me of? I remember way back when, in the quest for Neater, on these little seabird cannon fortresses. These exist uh, at the at an outpost that the, the these Blue Porter Guard has. And I remember these little NPC bots that used to live in them and have machine guns. And if you tried to get close enough on foot, these little bots would actually like fly out the window and start shooting at you. And I haven't seen any of those. So I'm wondering if they actually took those out of the game. If you guys, uh, if we have any OG FTD players who are watching this, who know what I'm talking about, the little NPC Rambots that would come out of certain things and just like shoot you in the face if you tried to board their vehicles. Are those still in the game? That's that's a question that I have. Um, I haven't seen any, but I also haven't tried to board these things manually. So, yeah. I'm curious. Man, this windmill also looks amazing. And this, this water tower. Oh my god! Okay, first off, there's the truck, which is of course cool. And second, I don't know how they got it meshed to the ground so well. And third, there is a blue cylinder mimicked inside the water tower. You can't even see that from the outside. That gets bonus points. You can't even see it from the outside. It's just there so that when it gets destroyed, it looks like water's in it. Rip the house. And the other house, too. Apps and chat for the Dust with Gypsies, boys. Alright, guys. I just popped in here at the end of the video. I'm in here in designer mode messing around with this thing. And I just wanted people to say that I tried a new uh, sort of... I tried a new way of uh, gathering the footage. Uh, it, because a lot of those fights were in degraded mode. Uh, I tried to gather the footage ahead of time. Uh, and then do the voiceover after that. And I'm not overly happy with how this one turned out, but there was a lot of technical issues. Uh, my apartment complex kept having power issues. Uh, and on top of that, 
there's been a lot of loud work going on. So uh, I had the option of uh, taking the footage that I had at subpar as it was and getting it out. Uh, my backup uh, actually got corrupted, which not not quite corrupted, but like it didn't properly save uh, my main uh, like half my base blueprints. It didn't save my material gatherer blueprints. So my like most of my base was completely uh, unfunctional in the backup, so I couldn't even go back to re-record. Uh, so this episode did not come out uh, anywhere near how I wanted it, uh, and I kind of want to apologize for that. But I didn't, I didn't see another option but to make the best of the footage that I had and to try to get something out. So I hope it wasn't too bad. I hope I did a decent job salvaging it, uh, and you can expect the next episodes to be uh, much better much more coherent uh, with with better footage than this one. And, uh, yeah, that, that's all I got for you. I'll see you soon. Uh, this was a lot of fun. It was definitely frustrating. Power outages uh, and corrupted saves. And, uh, you know, that working working together uh, against me to, to make this difficult. But, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope it did a decent job salvaging it. Uh, and I'll see you next time. The next From the Depths.